After his short silence, Mike Tyson had very contrasting and controversial takes on the fight between Anthony Joshua and Francis. His actions could potentially cause more chaos than knockout chaos did. Definitely, he's got a good relationship with Francis, but he made some very shocking and chaotic claims about himself. Let's get in. The epic fight between Anthony Joshua and Francis, tagged Knockout Chaos, has sparked several reactions from boxing fans all over the world, as well as present and past boxing professionals. Despite reigning mainly in the 80s and 90s, Mike Tyson has maintained his relevance in the world of boxing and is never a strange face in anything boxing-related. Once again, he's appeared to discuss a viral boxing event, and it's the fight between Anthony Joshua and Francis. Iron Mike revealed his thoughts and perceptions of the fight between the former UFC heavyweight champion Francis and the former unified world heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua. Let's hear exactly what Tyson has to say. Following responses from innumerable professional boxers about the match, the baddest man on the planet has shared his sentiments as regards the fight between Francis, his former trainee, and Anthony Joshua. This came after it was rumored to avoid making comments on the March 8th matchup between Anthony Joshua and Francis. Immediately after the match, rather than share his thoughts on the fight, the boxing legend took to social media to promote his coming clash against Jake Paul on July 20th. Iron Mike tweeted, July 20th fight at AT&T Stadium, fight live, free to all Netflix subscribers. Contract, big boy, sign the contract. No problem. Saturday, July 20th. His earlier decision to be silent must have been a result of his relationship with the one on the losing end of the knockout chaos and former UFC heavyweight champion, Francis. Remember Mike Tyson being Francis's trainer when he had that controversial match against Tyson Fury back in October? And stuff. All your, all your knockouts is spectacular. You know what that means? All this good stuff happening to you, you know what that means? That Francis, like many other boxers of his generation, always had Mike Tyson as his childhood hero and model. But something was different about Francis. He never had the privilege of seeing Mike Tyson until his 20s, even on TV. The poverty he faced was that bad. Due to the global fame of Tyson, Francis only heard Tyson's name, and that was enough to make him dream. Francis met Tyson in 2019 at Tyson's podcast studio, and that was where the topic of the fight against Tyson Fury came up. Yeah, Francis, you know, good. Yeah, I'm sure with the champ, he's making himself beautiful. Yes, yes, you have to be beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna be on television. Yeah. Being used to dreaming and seeing his dreams fulfilled, Francis eventually saw his dreams become reality when he had the fight he dreamt of right before him. The match between Tyson Fury and Francis was fixed. A dream was fulfilled. In fulfilling that dream, he had Mike Tyson join his team, and the two have forged a great relationship ever since. Sadly, Tyson could not join Francis's team for the training camp against Joshua. Francis claimed it was because of where their training camp was situated, saying, to be honest with this fight, since my training was here, Riyadh, we didn't get Mike Tyson here. Though it was said that he never ceased communicating with Mike Tyson, it's been largely believed that Mike Tyson's absence was a main reason for Francis's embarrassing loss against Joshua. Well, let's hear from Mike himself. Ensure you stick around till the end of Tyson's comments. And a shocking revelation about Mike Tyson's relationship with Anthony Joshua awaits you. The 57-year-old wasn't hesitant to reiterate a claim he made earlier in an interview when he was making a prediction on the fighter he tipped for a win. Everyone was talking about Francis's hard punches and all, but I said it. I don't like hard punches. Hard punches only make sense when they hit their target. Two until I saw him spar. You know, I watched him box around, he moved. But when I saw him hit this guy, this guy, 6'9", 6'8", six, six, big, strong. When he hit the guy, the guy... I, I never saw nothing like that before. Spence said he saw it before. I never saw it. He hit the guy the chin and broke... Mike Tyson spoke in contrast to the general opinion that Francis's hard punches were his main forte to earn him the victory. He evidently had very little regard for the Predator's punching power. Iron Mike, as he's famously called, was known to be one of the heaviest punchers in his prime. While getting an exact measurement of Mike's punching power remains impossible, as he never measured his punching power while in his prime, an estimate was given. Bruno was knocked out by Tyson twice. And during his prime, Tyson's two-time victim measured his punch, 
and it was measured at 1420 pounds of force. According to Thrillist, Tyson could at least have had the same measurement and possibly more. Being such a heavy puncher himself, it came as a shock to hear Mike Tyson's dislike for punches. That's like a lion saying it dislikes roaring. But Mike Tyson gave a perfect balance to this, claiming a hard punch was only effective if the target was hit. Though Francis's punches are great, they have no effect if the target is missed. Mike Tyson then continued. In a match where you don't throw a punch, your punch power is useless. Your punch power is potential. You don't bank so much on potential. Mike expounds more on the importance of accuracy and defenses over hard punches. In the match between Anthony Joshua and Francis, Francis was unable to deliver an accurate punch on Joshua as Joshua left the ring unscathed. Francis, however, had two knockdowns and a knockout in two rounds, with Mike claiming Francis's record-breaking punch power was mere potential, and it would only be effective if it landed on its target. Mike Tyson had a more thoughtful revelation to give. This time, it was from his observations and experience as a former boxing professional. Tyson had a boxing career that spanned 20 years, with the exception of the three years he spent in jail for being convicted of rape. He was sentenced to six years in prison, but was released on parole after three years. During his career, Mike Tyson reigned as the undisputed world champion from 1987 to 1990 and holds the record for being the youngest boxer ever to win a heavyweight title. Notably, he was the first heavyweight boxer to simultaneously hold the WBA, WBC, and IBF titles, as well as the only heavyweight to unify them in succession. A man with such extraordinary achievements is sure to have a repertoire full of factual observations and secret strategies. Tyson further revealed a fact about all heavyweight boxers. All heavyweights are heavy punchers, and a weak defense would always harm you in the division. Francis's defense wasn't tight enough, the most casual of Joshua's hits penetrated. Tyson believed heavyweight boxers are generally hard punchers, owing to their weight. The least weight of a heavyweight boxer is about 200 pounds. As a result, you'd expect such weighty men to have hit punches as well. Tyson passed his message across by explaining heavyweight boxing as being very open and how a weak defense was always going to pose some challenges. Francis's strength was glaring, but his weak defense brought a series of consecutive punches upon him that culminated in his knockout. Tyson opened up on Francis's defensive vulnerabilities and claimed even the most casual of Joshua's hits were penetrating. In addition, Tyson highlighted the major weakness of Francis that Joshua exploited. Joshua found a loophole and he took advantage of that. No matter the power of the punches, you don't fight with such leakiness and win. Mike Tyson added that Joshua exploited a loophole in the Predator's style, which was his leakiness. There was excessive focus on Francis's strengths and less emphasis on his weaknesses. Joshua undoubtedly understood this, as he was seen repeatedly making efforts to avoid a jab from Francis. This proved that Joshua was quite attentive to Francis's strengths and worked towards neutralizing them while exploiting his weaknesses. AJ could exploit his weakness so much that he became too powerless to show his strength. For those who think not including Mike Tyson in his team was a wrong decision from Francis. They probably have one more reason to feel right. If there was a major difference between Francis's match against Tyson Fury in October and his recent matchup against Anthony Joshua, then it must be his defensiveness. The match against Tyson Fury was Francis's boxing debut, yet his defensive awareness was super solid, avoiding any hard punch that might have caused a mere upset in the match. Francis's prevention of a Fury knockout is such an achievement in itself that it added up to his impressive performance to earn him a fight against former unified world heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua. Fury's knockout game is quite impressive, fighting 34 fights and ending 24 of them in knockouts. The Predator not only avoided a knockout, but also avoided any form of dominance from Fury. When compared to heavyweight boxers who have been Fury's opponents, Francis can be said to have outshined most of them, with Fury having a very slight win over him. Francis looked like he was going to be Fury's 25th knockout before the game. However, he caused so much upset for Fury that many still refer to Fury's victory as a very controversial one. This shot I have seen live. That's what a right hand that was. Incredible. And you can see the leg completely buckled. 
he knew he was throwing that. He, the, the first step he took, he knew exactly what he was going to do, Anthony Joshua. There. He wasn't having a look. He knew what he was going to do. He just walked up and went crack. After the match in October, Iron Mike was one of the first people on social media to criticize the decision. To him, Francis was the winner, and he didn't hide that from anyone. The real champion is Francis. I'm proud of the way you performed. More recently, after the fight on March 8th in the post-fight press conference, Anthony made a similar statement to Francis. You beat Fury, you beat him. Francis was so excellent on the day in October that he was the winner for everyone except the judges. Francis' performance took nothing from Fury, as Fury is yet to lose a boxing match. But for Francis, it was the needed statement to ensure his boxing career kept soaring. While it can't be completely held that Mike Tyson's coaching was the reason for his victory, the match against Anthony Joshua was solid proof, especially with his defensive laxity. When asked if his uninvolvement brought the humiliating loss on Francis, Tyson seemed reluctant to answer. I don't know. I don't think so. It's a match, and things happen differently. I could be with him, and he gets the same result. While Tyson seemed cautious about his responses, many aren't unblushing in declaring that Tyson's absence was the reason for Francis's loss. Let's compare Francis's defensive qualities in both matches and make our judgments. All through the first four rounds of the match against Fury, Fury was limited to very few hard rights, owing to Francis's defensive tightness. Fury picked up towards the fifth round until around the seventh round, but couldn't do as much as the knockdown Francis did on him in the third round. Francis seemed fatigued from the seventh round, but he was able to secure his defense and nullify Fury's offensive threats. From the eighth round downwards, both fighters seemed tired, but Fury had a slight edge, but not with any major threat to Francis's composure. The match ended in Fury's favor and in a close call, but Francis's defensive and offensive displays were super. In the match with Joshua, however, Francis had his first knockdown as early as the first round. He picked himself up, but he could offer no offensive threat to Joshua. In the second round, he got another knockdown and bounced back, only to receive the most denting one, the first knockout of his boxing career. Truly, the game without Tyson was nowhere as good as the one with Tyson's involvement, taking into consideration that Tyson Fury is a more rated heavyweight boxer than Anthony Joshua. Not wanting to speak against Francis as a result of their close relationship, Tyson seemed to give more boxing education and an unbiased analysis of the match. He then made a quote that seemed so much like a quote used in soccer, saying, If you don't score, ensure you don't concede. In soccer, the result of such a game is a tie or draw, where neither team scores nor concedes. Relating it to boxing, Mike Tyson said, If for some reason you can't land that punch yet, then ensure none of those punches land on you. This was both a direct lesson being taught to Francis and many upcoming boxers from the UFC or amateur. If the opponent seemed beyond reach, then don't sell yourself cheaply. Make yourself beyond reach as well. If Francis ever has to return to the boxing ring, an aspect he'll definitely focus on is his defensiveness. In addition, Mike Tyson was then asked what he had to say to Anthony Joshua. That was a great fight from him. He did well. He did boxing proud. No one saw it coming, but he did it like a real champ. He's just gotten himself some renewed recognition in a place where he's already well known. Tyson felt pleased with Joshua, despite preferring a Francis win. He felt impressed by Joshua's techniques and show of skill, which saw him knock out the world's best puncher. Mike admitted that he didn't see it coming, but Joshua gave him and everyone else a shock. He also felt Joshua has renewed his name in a company where he has been reputable. Joshua has reinstated himself as a huge contender for the biggest titles in the heavyweight division. Finally, when asked if he's got any advice for Francis, Mike Tyson sounded elated to do so. First, he should keep on fighting. He should keep in mind that sport comes with ups and downs and you shouldn't quit after an obstacle. The admiration Francis and Iron Mike share for each other must be exciting, seeing Mike's encouraging words to him. Mike didn't stop there. He went on to use his famous story as an example for Francis. I was a heavyweight champion before I was convicted, but I had an obstacle, not even in the ring. I was sent to prison and I came back. I came back only to win again. That's combat sports for you. You go down, get up, and fight against. Mike told the story of how he was able to overcome the disappointments and regrets that came with his conviction.
Notwithstanding, he was back in a few years and went in the ring to reclaim his championship. Mike seemed to have so many deep insights about the game of boxing and admiration for Francis to have spilled such depth. However, Mike doesn't have it so bad with Joshua as well. Mike and Joshua have a decent relationship and as promised, here you have what's most shocking about them. Maybe not as crazy and obsessed as Francis, but Joshua has always found Mike Tyson as an inspiration as well. Mike Tyson was so renowned and reputable for his greatness that almost all boxers of this generation would refer to him as an inspiration. Mike Tyson to boxing is what Michael Jordan is to the NBA. Only the NBA doesn't involve face-offs that might have you humiliate and disrespect a legend of the sport that you've admired all your life. He's earned his respect, and he gets it in huge returns from myriad professional boxers all around the world, and Anthony Joshua is just one of them. When asked about his top five greatest heavyweight boxers of all time, Anthony was so elated to enlist Mike Tyson as his second best. In his words, my number two is going to be Iron Man, the man I would love to read comic books about when I was a kid. Iron Mike Tyson, the beast, the man with a 19-inch nick, the man with the quads that made people say don't skip leg day, now chess that made you have to get your suits tailored, the beast that will knock you over left or right. You know what I mean. Iron Mike Tyson is definitely in my top five. Two. Number two is going to be the Iron Man, the man that I would love to have read comic books about when I was a kid. Iron Mike Tyson, the beast. While Francis had an unprivileged childhood that afforded him no opportunity to see his hero on TV till he was in his 20s, Joshua had one where he could watch and read so much about Mike Tyson. Joshua could call Mike by almost all his nicks and seemed to have memorized excerpts from one of the comic books he claimed to have read as a child. When I first started boxing, it's a way, because I'm like six foot six, seven, and I'll be crouching down like a five-foot fighter because I used to just love the way Tyson used to fight in that. And so Tyson is definitely my number two. In my top five. You know, when I first started boxing, it's weird because I'm like six foot six, seven. And I'll be crouching down like a five-foot fighter because I used to just love the way Tyson used to fight in that. And then Joshua's obsession with Mike Tyson wasn't to be underestimated. Joshua, who has a height of six by six, explained that he'd often crouch to the level of a five-foot fighter to imitate Mike Tyson's style. While Joshua looks to have overcome such imitation, his obsession with Mike Tyson could be seen all over his smiles as he described him. Mike Tyson was also talking about Joshua after one of his famous knockouts some time ago. In similar fashion, Mike spoke with so much admiration for AJ and called him special. Listen, had his heart overcome all of his weaknesses, but when he got up from that bomb, that overcome all of his weaknesses. He got a plane to take the punches. No doubt he took a form. They're still fighting, and he still had time to knock him out at that time, but he did. He overcame those two or three rounds and just came back and you saw what happened. This is what makes him special. Listen, his heart overcomes all of his weaknesses. When he got up from that bomb, that overcomes all of his weaknesses. He got to take a punch. He could take a punch. There's no doubt. He took a bomb. Still had some more time. They're fighting still. Talking about the match, Mike claimed Joshua's fight had the best ending to a fight and fed the audience with the exact meals they needed. It was a dramatic ending. You know, it's just so resounding. Boom. That's what people want. But some people may not want me to say this. They may not want to hear this. They talk about safety, support, and boxing. People watching people get hurt are simply knocked out. That's just what we ought to see. That's what you want to make sure of. What do you want to do with guys playing around for 12 to 15 rounds fighting? It was a dramatic ending. You know what I mean? It was just such so resounding. Boom! That's what people want, boss. And people, they may not want me to say this. Unlike the Furies, who named their son after Iron Mike and still go ahead to fire shots at him, AJ has a humble respect for Mike Tyson, and never have they been seen hurling words at each other. Francis would be looking forward to his match against Renan Ferreira as he makes his return to the UFC soon. Iron Mike would be looking forward to his controversial return to boxing on July 20th as he takes on Jake Paul in a match that's attracted comments from many boxing professionals. While Anthony Joshua's main match won't be decided until a double matchup between Tyson Fury and Oleksandr Usyk, he has opened up about preparing for a match in the summer. 
There's so much more coming from us to you. You can check our other videos to stay updated with news from the world of boxing and turn on notifications to be alerted when our contents are ready for you. Until next time, peace out.